So you can see she's running along at 480 to 500 milliseconds, uh, not too fast. A little bit irregular, and then all of a sudden it gets really fast. You can get 230 milliseconds, sometimes faster. A little bit of pauses there, but at this point it meets detection right here. It's detected VF, which is what the device labels, and it does look like it could be a really fast VC, but it's going to be a and at this point the device is charging. It does try to do a burst therapy in here. That's the TP, the tacky case, which it'll do while it's charging. Okay. That was unsuccessful. So she's got a BVI That's correct. Um, single lead. Pacemaker defibrillator. defibrillator. It's an ICD pacemaker yes. pacemaker defibrillator. Okay. Because that's the charging is for the defibrillator. So it's still charging here. Charging. It tried the burst pace to break it. It did not work. So the the tachycardia control continued, and then you got CD, which is charged delivered. You delivered it there, and then you can see what the arrhythmia is. Okay. So from there, the shot to there. Okay. And this and this was an episode that happened on the. Uh, this happened on July 21st. July 21st, and today is July 26th. So the two episodes. Five days ago. Yeah. The two episodes they thought happened today didn't happen. Neither. No. So this was at 12:30 in the morning. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, so she was probably sleeping, probably never felt it, but she was going 273 beats a minute. It was a median. So she's going very fast. Wow. Okay. Total episode took 12 seconds for it to happen, for it to detect it, for it to charge up, and then to successfully treat it. Okay. Now there was one that they said they felt yesterday that did occur. Okay. I'll pull that one over here. And this one again, you can see this is a ventricular rate about 900 milliseconds. That's maybe it would take 70 beats per minute. All right, and now all of a sudden it drops down. Anything below this line, this is the detection. This is the corner. Doomsday sequence begins when you start having all these dots as a ventricular rate. Okay. You have dots below that, you've got to get 30 out of 40 that are below this line. <laughs> and at that point, you've got detection, which it shows you. So then you see we're plugging around about 580, 600 milliseconds, maybe 100 beats per minute, 90, whatever, not too bad for a six-year-old, and now it gets really fast. <clears throat> Picks up and shows you, this is a far field, but it's a near field using it. Okay. Continues on, very, very fast. Got <clears throat> all these good senses, good sense, good sense. And again, you've got detection right here. At this point, it starts charging. It did not even do the, uh, and I tack you pacing the tent this time because okay. it was unsuccessful last time. Okay. So it just continues on until the charge ends and the charge is delivered. Okay. At that point. And when, and when did this and when did this happen? This happened at about quarter to three yesterday. Yesterday. Okay. So, so she did have an event yesterday. yesterday. She did yesterday. Okay. So they're correct when they said he and he saw it. The dad saw it yesterday. Today she just said she thought she had one. Okay. And she did. Her leg was numb. I mean something might have obviously something was going on, but it was not a shot. All right, so this young girl is um, how many years old? Six? Six years old, all right. And uh, so uh, we had two episodes today, uh, actually an episode today and, and on the 21st episode where she had to run a VTAC and her uh, uh, defibrillator uh, did its job. She is uh, very interested right now, I think, in what, what show is this? I think it's that. <laughs> so we, we have the cardiology team here. And uh, you want to tell us a little bit about uh, our patient? Okay, this young lady has something called long QT syndrome, which is a rare genetic disorder, which is caused by abnormalities in the proteins that let salts move in and out of the cardiac muscle cells. The three common genes that are involved are the sodium channel gene, the potassium channel gene, and the gliadidine receptor, calcium channel gene. Um, all of these genes act to make the repolarization of the ventricle abnormal so that it takes longer for the ventricle to recover from a heartbeat. If during the interval of recovery an early heartbeat happens, it can trigger a very fast, very disorganized kind of heart rhythm called ventricular tachycardia. And there's a specific kind that you see in long QT syndrome called torsi de punct. And what that means is that the, the, the spiky waves from the ventricular tachycardia go above and below the baseline and turn about the baseline. And does she get torsi de point when she has her 
rhythm abnormalities. This rhythm abnormality that she had was just non-sustained ventricular tachycardia. Okay. Um, that's not what, what was seen, the torsi was not seen on the tracing, but it's a very common rhythm disturbance. Okay. This kind of ventricular tachycardia is important to know about because when patients show up in the emergency department with it, lidocaine and some other medications that are sometimes used to treat ventricular tachycardia are actually counterproductive because they can make your uh, QT interval long. Yeah. Quinidine and procainamide also are, are drugs. Am amiodarone? Uh, amiodarone can do it too. Yeah. It sure can. So, um, Magnesium and beta blockers are the acute treatment for torsi. Mm -hmm. um, avoiding medications which further lengthen the QT. Medicines um, like Fluconazole. Um, there are a number of, of medicines. There are some good websites. Yeah, uh, the long list. Torsi.org is a good one that, that has all of the, the medicines that can make this worse. But antihistamines. Um, some SSRIs, a number of different classes and medications. So if this young girl did not have her um, defibrillator and she came in and she was running in, in VTAC, uh, not necessarily to her side to point, but what would you do in the ER setting on, on her? Would you still do magnesium? Ma magnesium. Just only magnesium. And, and uh, Ismol, a, a short-acting beta blocker is very useful in the treatment of that rhythm. Okay. Now, I was looking at her and EKG. Shock. and And Cardio version. Yes. Sure. Good. I was looking at her EKG and it almost looks like a Brigada pattern a little bit, does it not? Uh, I, I did you see, did, haven't seen her. Yeah, actually, I'll pull it up. We'll, we'll grab the EKG and have you take a look at it. But it, 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 it the, you know, V1 through V3 has kind of. It's the elevation and the right on the brain spot? It, it's, yeah, it's, it, it's not, it's, it, it looks a little Brigada ish. I mean, I, I guess there's two or three versions of Brigada, but it kind of has that. Brigada is related to long QT. It is a sodium channel opathy, and um, it is, uh, was originally described in Italy. But a family history of early sudden death, family history of um, deafness, because some of these are associated with sensory neural hearing, hearing loss, loss. Mm -hmm. and uh, a family history of patients who have frequent syncope or who have died suddenly when being startled. There's one type of this that the startle response, like an alarm clock or a telephone, can actually trigger torsades and sudden death. Okay. Um, now this patient, apparently her dad and two aunts are uh, have um, the ICDs. Yes. And because they have the same syndrome. Right. And she has siblings who have genetic evidence for this syndrome as well. Okay. All right. So There's been nobody who died suddenly in their family, though. No. No one's died suddenly in the family. A family history of sudden death or a history of multiple episodes of syncope with long QT syndrome is indication for placement of an uh, anti-tachycardia pacemaker defibrillator. Blockers are useful in the um, prevention of sudden death in these patients, and the risk uh, goes from about 86% to 6% when treated with beta blockers if your QT interval on beta blockers normalizes. So they're an important um, mainstay in the long-term treatment. A number of other things have been tried. Stellate ganglionectomy has, uh -huh. has been used in the past. It's no longer uh, a mainstream th therapy. And that's did it help at all? It, there was a thought that it did in some patients, but AICDs are thought to be superior to that in, in preventing sudden death. Okay, and so she has an AICD that was put in, was placed in April, in April. of this year. Okay, all right. Dr. Lou, here's her, uh, here's her EKG. And uh, wax eloquent for me here on her EKG. Well, I think that the, the main thing about her EKG that's interesting is the, the uh, of course, the long QT interval. Now, a good rule of thumb in screening an EKG is to measure the QT just with calipers or with a 3x5 card, a straight edge. And if the QT interval is less than half of the RR interval, then the QT is normal. Clearly, here, from the beginning of the, Q, the QRS complex to the end of the T-wave, 
or the end of the U wave in patients who have big U waves, mm -hmm. which are common in this disease. This interval is the QT. To correct it for the heart rate, you divide by the square root of the RR interval. And hers is clearly long. Yeah, at um, point five, 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 seven, yeah, or yeah, five, six. Yeah. Normal range for kids. I had kids, already done that in my head, so. Normal range for kids is four two, 0 0.42 to 0 0.44 seconds. So that's way outside of the limit of normal. Okay. We, we have some kids who are kind of borderline at the 0 0.46, 0 0.47, 0 0.48 range. And, and those children we generally um, repeat it. If you find a kid with long QT syndrome on an EKG or with a long QT interval, one of the things you do to figure out whether they have long QT syndrome is to put them on a treadmill and see if the um, QT interval shortens um, with increasing heart rates, which is this normal response. If you don't get that response, then or if it lengthens, then you are more likely dealing with somebody with long QT. What's interesting on this EKG is these funny biphasic yeah, long yeah. T so waves. That's, that's why I was wondering about the morphology. That's why I was thinking, is this some form but of a Brigada no, that would look like? Brigada look like. usually has a right bundle branch block pattern in V1 and V2 and ST elevation. Um, yeah. They make this sort of a box type yeah. thing. Yeah, so I, was, I guess my imagination was there was some ST I, elevation. But. Yeah, I, I think the J point is, is pretty well straight with a flat with a baseline. But the T waves are, are very funny and, and very long, and, uh, and they have this funny biphasic look to them. Sometimes you'll also see patients with really big, bizarre looking U waves. And when you, when you see those, you want to measure to the end of the U wave. Okay. Uh, That's a great teaching point. To, to include the, the QT, uh, to calculate your corrected QT interval. Okay. So this is, this is a typical sort of long QT EKG. Thank you. What did it feel like when, when your uh, defibrillator went off? You felt dizzy. Did you? What did you feel in your chest? Did you feel a little bump, like some, like something jumped? Let's let's take a look at your chest here. Let's just see where you got your uh, your AICD. So it's like right here. It's all this right through there. Okay, and uh, I can show it on on your X-ray too, but. Uh, you don't mind being on, on a video, do you? You do mind or you don't mind? She's she's Is it okay, okay with to it. Be on video? Yeah. Okay. Are you okay being on I'm video? Okay, being on okay video. good. <laughs> All right. You're doing some good child life stuff okay. here. All right.